What's going on, everybody? Y'all already know the vibes, baby. And today we have an important question that needs to be answered. It's what Halo is the best Halo in the franchise? Today, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently, though. We're going to go in chronological order. We're not going to work our way from the bottom to the top. So that means the first game that is up for the hot seat is none other than the first Halo in the franchise, Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 1, Halo CE, whatever you want to call it. This, without a doubt, S tier, okay? This game is the game that really set the tone. This is the first of its kind. This game literally set the tone for decades to follow. Halo 1 was the first game that I ever played on Xbox. Uh, it set it set the tone for first person shooters. You know, it gave first person shooters a storyline. Everyone knows Master Chief. Everyone knows Cortana. The campaign was beautiful. The controls, the mechanics were beautiful. There was nothing like this before it. Okay. Obviously, there were other games. Okay. Where is this not? We're not getting that topic. This game changed multiplayer first person shooters forever and i know some of you guys might be saying well there wasn't a multiplayer there was technically okay there was technically um it just wasn't xbox live i'm an old head i know that if any of you guys in the comment section want to tell all the young kids the zoomers what you played halo one to play multiplayer on you can if you want but i'm not going to so anyways this game was just the first to really piece together both storylines of that that single player game have substance but then also bringing in this first person shooter to where you can be competitive but at the same time have fun casually this game is just a classic if there was a hall of fame it is first ballot hall of fame there's nothing else to be said about it this game forever will live on it's a classic it's an s tier moving on to the next halo in the franchise halo 2 obviously halo 2 comes after halo 1 and this game is in my opinion the game that changed everything for me and that's because halo 2 after the widely successful halo 1 the first installment of the halo series came out halo 2 launched and it blew everyone away this game shipped with online multiplayer through microsoft's xbox live this is when xbox live became a thing you could game with all of your homies and it it just shifted the console gaming culture in that aspect but on top of that it stuck to its epic storylines with the campaign the campaign i personally think the Halo 2's campaign was the best campaign of all time. That might be a hot take. On the competitive side of things, Halo 2 really took off. I thought Halo 2 competitively was one of the best first person shooter games that we've ever had. Um, you had just great mechanics. You had probably because of a, a little bit of a lucky run, you had button glitches or combinations, which really improved the skill gap um, in, in the aspect of you can kind of chain these combos together to get like a two shot kill instead of a four shot kill or almost like a one hit beat down um, sort of thing. It was phenomenal. So it's definitely in the S tier. These two are without a doubt in the S tier. Halo 1 and Halo 2. And those are the only two. Next up, we have none other than Halo 3. And while I think I spent the most time on Halo 3 as a child, it just can't be placed in the S tier. It just can't. It's a it's a haul of very freaking good. It is in the A tier, and you can't be upset because it's only Halo 1 and Halo 2 above you. Halo 3 was the game that really got me into competitive gaming, got me into MLG. Once again, they kept being innovative. Halo 3 launched. They had Forge mode that was implemented into the game. I'll touch on that in a you know little bit. Now, if you look at Halo 3 in terms of the campaign, still very good. I don't think it was as good as Halo 2's, uh, especially with how deep Halo 2 kind of dove into the lore. I will say this. Halo 3 did kind of have to pick up the slack a little bit for the end of Halo 2's campaign. And 
the final scene, like the final mission is hands down the best Halo mission in Halo campaign history. Honestly, it's probably one of the best missions of any single player story uh, in the history of games. Done it, Chief. Jump. Floor it right into the hangar. We'll make it. It's been an honor serving with you, John. Halo 3's multiplayer, in my opinion, was far superior. Okay, not only did they have the ranked playlist and they had the more casual playlist, they had Forge Mode that I said, they had theater, they really made strides to make multiplayer the best experience for its consumers. Similar to Halo 2 with Forge Mode, it was the game to play with your friends, to kind of be that party game because Forge Mode is very similar to what like the creative mode in Fortnite is nowadays. You can kind of do whatever you want. You can build whatever you want on the map. You can add guns wherever you want. You can add vehicles wherever you want. You could spend countless hours having an absolute blast doing really nothing but playing these mini games that people created, or maybe you even created yourself in Halo 3. I think the only thing that is holding me back from putting Halo 3 in the S tier is online Halo 3. It's probably one of the worst Halos ever from strictly being competitive, professional uh, Halo. That's it. It was night and day difference from online to land. The online aspect of Halo 3 is the only thing that holds me back, but it was a huge part of it. It was a huge part of it to me. I think the game still was amazing. I would love to give it S tier, but A tier for sure, without a doubt, Halo 3. Next up in order after Halo 3 dropped, we got Halo Wars and didn't really play it. Game was trash. Putting in the D tier, not my cup of tea. Uh, I think it flopped massively. I think it had a lot of potential, but eh, it just was, it, it wasn't the direction. They they tried to be innovative. It just wasn't it. it. Didn't hit. So we're putting that in D tier. I would put it in just like complete garbage uh, if there was a tier lower than D. And then in 2010, finally another Halo game. Halo Reach was still on the circuit in MLG. They also tried to be innovative with this game. They switched it up completely from the past three Halos, not counting Halo Wars, whatever that was. Uh, there was no more BR. It was a DMR, okay? It was a single bullet gun. They tried Sprint. They tried Bloom on the guns. And not a lot of people loved it. I personally didn't really enjoy it. Um, on the competitive side of things, I think they tried something new. It just didn't pan out. The maps were okay. They weren't nearly as good as Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3. It just felt like Bungie didn't care anymore, basically. They were on their way out. They gave y'all reach after having three very unbelievable games in Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3. And it just didn't hit the same. It, it didn't hit the same. I will say that the online experience, I think, was better which is one thing that really sucked in Halo 3. And on the competitive side of things, Halo Reach did get a lot better when they removed no bloom and no sprint. And it really got back to its roots, its, its core Halo roots. But it just was not that good of a game. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. C tier, do we do C or B? You know what, we'll do C, we'll do C. Next up, we have Halo 4. This was the first game by 343 Studios, and this game was not good. I'm gonna put it in a D tier and I'll explain why. First up, we have the Halo 4 campaign. And I think this is kind of where it took a weird turn, uh, the series really in general, but the campaign really focused on the relationship between Master Chief and Cortana. Uh, it was kind of drama packed. Seemed a little repetitive to me, but it just, it branched off. It was like, what is it called? Not fluff. Technically fluff for lack of a better word works, but oh, filler. It was like a filler campaign to me. 
I just didn't enjoy it. Didn't really want to see or go as deep as they went with Master Chief and Cortana relationship. Wasn't feeling it. Not in the slightest. And then in terms of multiplayer, it just felt like it took a step back. I know this was a 343 Halo game, but it, it felt very cartoony. I did not enjoy the maps. I didn't enjoy much of the gameplay, like the, yeah, the gameplay itself, the guns, the mechanics, how it felt. It just didn't feel like Halo. There was obviously sprint involved. I it just, it wasn't for me. And it, on the side of competitive, MLG had dropped Halo from the scene. It was ran by some shysty side organizations. So that obviously is a very important part uh, of my opinion. But I just think when you look at the core gameplay itself, it just wasn't it. Um, they tried, failed miserably, but they tried. They get a C minus for effort. But unfortunately, Halo 4 is in D. And then in 2015, we have Halo 5. Now, I'll be honest, guys, I have never played the Halo 5 campaign. Uh, and I played the game a little bit, but not as much as really any of the other Halos prior to this. I have watched like the campaign walkthroughs and, you know, reactions. And in, in terms of multiplayer, which is what this game is going to be ranked on primarily, I actually thought it was a really good Halo. You know, they went for something completely new. Pistol start. Um, there was a dash mechanic, sprinting. I thoroughly enjoyed Halo 5. I did. I think it is a breath of fresh air in the Halo scene at this point in time. Um, and similarly to Reach, they did try to be innovative. They did try something new. And I think it worked out. So I have it in the B tier, to be honest. Even though... You might not have enjoyed the campaign. It, it's going to be hard. Look, it's going to be hard to top the early Halo campaigns. It really is. It's just, that's just how the cookie crumbles. Okay. And I know compared to the early Halos, Halo 5 is completely different, but I think they did a phenomenal job of trying something new and actually nailing on trying whatever that was. Um, this is what I think Halo Reach should have done if they wanted to be innovative and try something new. But I think that was Bungie of just being like, ah, whatever, here's another Halo. We already made absolute bajillions off this game. Everyone already loves Halo, don't matter. Then we had Halo Wars 2, which once again, the first one was a flop. Didn't even play this game. And I can already tell you it's D tier. Okay, fight me in the comments if you don't think it's utter garbage, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it's utter garbage. And we're moving on to the final one, Halo Infinite. Now, here's where it gets tough, okay? Because I will say this. I have not played the Halo Infinite campaign yet. I'm going to be playing it very shortly. But I do like that the fact is, once again, they are trying to be innovative. The Halo Infinite campaign is an open world. Obviously, there's some issues, some bugs. You can't replay missions yet. Uh, they There isn't co-op, which I wish there was. But I've only heard good things about the Halo Infinite campaign. I can't wait to personally get my hands on it and start playing it. But in terms of multiplayer, here's where they changed the game again. Halo Infinite is a free to play multiplayer game. Unbelievable. I don't know why it took so long, realistically, but that's a huge plus. Okay. It gets more eyes on the game, gets more people to be willing to kind of get back into the Halo series. This is a series that I've loved and had close to my heart for a very long time. And I almost lost hope. I mean, damn, I did lose hope in us ever getting a good Halo multiplayer again, but they did everything in their hands to give us a breath of fresh air, give us something to be excited for again in, in, in the Halo world. Some of the issues are you run into some cheaters. The ranked playlist isn't the best. I think it needs to get tweaked a little bit. But the fact that they have it in and I'm speaking on Halo Infinite before the likes of Forge comes out, before there's co-op, uh, before they add more maps. I know, I know that they're going to absolutely hit a home run out of the park when all of this drops. I just wish it would have been able to drop when the actual game did. But when Forge is out, when they have campaign as co-op, when they add the more maps, there's going to be just endless amounts of things that you can do on Infinite. 
So I think they did a great job. They honestly restored the passion and the excitement that I had for the early Halo games like Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo 3. Yes, they need to fix certain things, but Halo Infinite from top to bottom, in my opinion, it belongs in the A tier. And this is the only list that makes sense, okay? If this is not your Halo tier list, your Halo game tier list, you're completely wrong. If you got Halo Reach or Halo 5 above any of these in S or A tier, you're absolutely drunk. If you got Reach even sniffing B tier, you're absolutely drunk. If you even played Halo Wars or Halo 4, you're absolutely drunk. So this is the only correct Halo tier list on the internet right now. Thank you for your time.